thank you very much for the invitation and thank you all for being here. Yes, my talk today will be yeah, basically based on the work that we're doing in the large uh, Danish-based project called Playful Learning Research Extension. Um, I will say something about the need for yeah, conceptualizations of play within this context. And then I will show you some approaches to how we have done it in a very concrete way. I brought uh, some tarot cards. So uh, yeah, um, I will get back to that later. Yes, uh, for quite some time, uh, my work has been on uh, thinking about how play uh, can meet education in a meaningful way. And the last couple of years, we have been working on several reviews uh, about playful uh, learning in higher education. And those reviews uh, showed, yeah, all of them basically, that it's not an easy job to introduce uh, play into education. Uh, and several consequences uh, happen when we do that. And those reviews, they have shown that uh, basically definitions of play, they are on the one hand very ambitious, ambitious and you probably know, uh, know that. So when we are, as yeah, Brian Sutton Smith mentions in his book, uh, Ambiguity of Play, he says that when we're going to conceptualize plays, we all, all of a sudden, uh, yeah, sound very uh, silly. So there is a need for, on the one hand, definitions of play, and when they meet uh, education, it seems to be even uh, yeah, more important. On the one hand, uh, we have all these different ways of conceptualizing play. I have mentioned some of them here. We talk about playing, we talk about playfulness, playful, play a game, game, gamification, and the all these conceptualizations, they, they seem to miss up yeah, the conversation that we can have. And on the other hand, the, the, there is a st very strong purpose uh, when, enter, uh, when play meet, meets education. So there is a strong idea about what education is about, the purpose of education. And there are also some assumptions about what that type of education uh, should look like. So uh, yeah, you uh, probably get the sense now that on the one hand, this very complicated conceptualization meeting uh, a need in education where, where education has a specific purpose. And it, that sort of creates a clash. Um, so my work has basically been to think about how we can make that clash uh, more poetic, more playful, more uh, meaningful. Uh, on the one hand, insisting on uh, yeah, this uh, messiness of play, and on the other hand, uh, having a very strong idea about the purpose of education. And uh, you probably all know that when that clash is happening, often it means that, uh, or it turns out that play is somehow yeah, excluded, or at least some of the dimensions of play are excluded because they don't meet uh, the purpose of education. And uh, my, uh, my colleague uh, Steinroth, he has um, yeah, formulated it in, in this way. So he says it's problematic that there is an ideology uh, stance found in much of the literature on serious games and gamification that persists that games and play are somehow inferior unless they are useful. So uh, what he's aiming at saying is that um, when we are conceptualizing play in the, in the context, of, context of education, we need to conceptualize it, or it seems that it's conceptualized in a way where play needs to show its usefulness. And if it doesn't do that, then play is in trouble. So my question uh, to myself and my research uh, colleagues over here and the project is uh, the question of how we can conceptualize play in relation to education in a meaningful way, aiming at the poetics of play and the purpose of education. So how is it possible to come up with a conceptualization that on the one hand, um, 
meets the uh, the need for play to be there in all the nuances and all the silliness, so to speak, and on the other hand, having a clear idea about yeah the purpose of education that we somehow need to meet that even though the assumptions of the purpose maybe maybe we can change that a bit but at least we need to have a sense of the purpose all right you get the idea yeah conceptualizing on the one hand and meeting the purpose of education on the other hand and the the um, the way that we have uh, worked around this is to um, instead of talking about play that we are playing in education or we need to come up with a playful activities for education. We are simply talking about education with play qualities. We're talking about teaching with play qualities. We're talking about learning with play qualities. So we are having activities within the context of education and those activities, they have play qualities. So the next couple of slides, I will try to dig a bit more into this, this concept of play qualities because maybe it makes it more complicated, maybe it helps us, maybe it helps us, maybe it doesn't. Well, we'll see, right? So uh, I will um, yeah, say a bit about uh, play qualities for the next uh, couple of slides. Uh, I forgot to say that you're more than welcome to ask me questions uh, in the end because uh, this, an, this is a building up an argumentation, so I hope you will be a bit patient uh, with me. Yes, so uh, play quality, what is that? Uh, it, uh, the word is uh, two words, right? It's play and it's quality. And if I dig into the quality part first, uh, it's basically... Uh, Quality is basically saying something about the characteristics of play. So I'm using this word. Uh, yeah, it's actually coming from German, but in Danish it's, it's beskaffenhed. So it's it's a, a characteristic of something, in this case, uh, play. And uh, these characteristics, uh, you can't understand them. You know, there is so much uh, work these days about quality work for this and that. and if what we are aiming at here is not a quality as a specific procedure for something or an abstraction of a value about something. It's very important to say that qualities are uh, close re closely related to events of play. So quality is not something that is, you could say, but it's something that happens. So the only way we can get a sense of quality about something is to be involved in events where those qualities are happening. So, so, uh, so quality is the, on the one hand a characteristic of play, but the only way we can get a sense of those characteristics, characteristics are being involved in events of play. Uh, being involved in those events are closely related to uh, actions. So events are basically number of actions taking place over time. So we need to get a sense of those actions in order to get a sense of the events and in order to get a sense of the qualities. Yeah, and the last really important um, dimension of this idea about quality is that quality is related to actions that are a part of uh, events and those actions, it's always somebody's actions. So we can't really uh, leave out the people being involved in those events in order for us to get a sense of, of the quality. So the argumentation is that qualities, they are related to actions. Those actions are related to somebody, and it means that qual play qualities are always qualities to somebody. Yeah, you get the sense of uh, where I'm heading here. And of course, if, we, if we're going to get, a, get an understanding of play qualities in, in relation to educational activities, we have to be empirically really, really close to the events actually happening within a specific education, within a specific context with specific people. Uh, yeah, and um, another uh, thing that is important to mention here is that I often get the uh, question uh, uh, when I say qualities to somebody, so is it very 
subjectives, uh, subjective what qualities what that we're talking about, but but uh, but the someone and somebody is not always related to a single individual, but is often related to a social situation where play is happening. So characteristics of play, they are related to events, and those events are number of actions, and those actions somebody is uh, doing, and those somebody are often uh, more than one, so a social activity going on. And if we're going to get a sense of these play qualities, we need to get a sense of this social taste of quality. And uh, they are not at all uh, procedures that we can define uh, far away from what is actually taking place, but, but are very closely related to specific situations where they are happening. Yes. This way of uh, understanding quality is, of course, uh, obvious enough, also related to a specific understanding about what play is. And in a sense, you can say the same thing about play. It's very closely related to events, it's very closely related to actions, and it's closely related to the people being involved in those events. And uh, the play understanding that this work is based on is uh, my work on uh, the mood perspective, and you can get uh, references in the end, but, but basically this mood perspective, it's very much, um, it has all its values coming from, yeah, Scandinavian pedagogy. Uh, it's not a psychology, it's more like a, a combination between uh, philosophy and sociology. But uh, but I won't say uh, so much about uh, the mood perspective, just to give you a sense of where this uh, way of thinking about a playful activity comes from. Yes. Um, well, I started by saying education and play, that's not necessarily a happy marriage. We need to consider how, uh, how we bring in those practices I, I, uh, my, uh, my idea is the concept of play quality as a way to come around some of the problems that I have uh, mentioned here. And then, of course, the next question is then how? I mean, uh, play quality and the concept and the definition is not enough. So what we have been working on for some years now in the project is to come up with approaches where we can help teachers to uh, design for these play qualities. So how can we come up with designs within e education where it's actually possible for them to support, bring in, uh, make space for uh, different types of qualities. And the next, uh, the next couple of slides, I will, um, I will talk about um, these approaches and uh, specifically the approach of bringing in tarot cards to the teacher and pedagogic education. Um, and uh, I will also mention here, um, uh, if, you th if you remember that I, say that I said that play qualities, they were very much related to specific uh, events, related to specific actions, and it also means uh, an actions uh, that somebody is yeah, participating in. Then it's also important to mention another inspiration, that's uh, Lennon, and she's a UK-based philosopher, uh, and she has done a book about imagination. And what is so interesting about her book is, um, is her uh, way of, of placing the body within uh, that imaginative practice. And what she's saying here in this quote is, what becomes central to this account in the later work is simply our bodily manipulations as giving shapes to the world, shape to the world, sorry, but the fact that we can bring the world to expression, which we need our bodies to do so. So if we talk about a, a concept of uh, play qualities, it's related to events, then and somebody is taking part of the event, then of course the bodily interaction, the bodily participation in that event is also something that we must take into consideration. 
And what we have basically done in, um, in yeah, how to approach this uh, idea about uh, play quality is to uh, bring in a, a design uh, that we call the play tarot. And uh, uh, Eileen, if you want to uh, let people feel it with their hands and their body. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So it's it, we we are uh, basically trying to uh, take the tarot scenario as a system, and we are bringing that system uh, into these ideas uh, about uh, play qualities. And uh, I mentioned briefly that it was based on the mood perspective, and in the mood perspective, I'm working with with different. Uh, play practices, so different ways to express uh, play when it's taking place. And I'm working with like four uh, ground actions, you could say that, and they are, um, they are connected to several actions that sort of always takes place when we talk about sliding, for example, which is one action. So that's the framework and system behind the cards. And uh, if you look at the cards, they are inspired by the tarot system. They are, um, they are structured within four houses. And within each house, there are a number of actions that sort of gives us an idea about what play qualities uh, we can talk about here. And uh, maybe you could um, think that, okay, if building, if I, I say that building is a play quality, uh, aren't there building practices that doesn't have play qualities? Well, yes, because it, it's um, very much depending on the specific situation, the specific event, the people being involved, the materials being involved. So uh, what we are aiming at with the tarot is to sort of anger our uh, way of thinking about play qualities into specific actions and then the sp uh, uh, exploring the specific uh, situation will give us an idea about whether this situation has whether this play event whether whether this activity with play quality uh, has uh, play qualities Yes, maybe I'm a, I'm a bit fast here, but I hope that you are uh, following uh, the idea. Um, so basically, uh, what we did with the tarot uh, cards, we, we, we took the tarot system, the tarot uh, scenario, and we brought um, play qualities into the picture. And then we, uh, we are using the tarot uh, to, to do different types of interviews within teacher and pedagogue education uh, inspired by the episodic interview, uh, which is a uh, yeah, research method um, and research-based. And those uh, three um, dimensions of the, of the tarot cards uh, yeah, makes it possible for us on the one hand to explore specific situation where students are involved in, in events that has play qualities, uh, but we also get, um, they also get a sense of how they can approach uh, what they are involved with, and maybe they also get the sense of maybe there are play qualities that simply are not there, or maybe there are uh, play qualities that they don't expect to be within education, but there might be uh, possibilities. There might be qualities that they could add to their to their to their future events that they are creating. So that's basically uh, basically the idea. Um, yes. I don't know how much time do I have left. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I will just say a bit about uh, what we actually did. Um, uh, so a lot of the tarot card is uh, the tarot card work is based on uh, design experiments or experiments within education. So together with uh, pedagogues and uh, teacher students, uh, we invited them into different uh, activities that we would. 
uh, identify as uh, playful learning activities. And then after, the, after being involved in the activity, we invited one group of students to a conversation about what they just experienced and what they might experience in the future. And we start by asking them, using the tarot cards, we start by asking, asking them to tell the story about what they have just been involved in. And after they uh, have told these stories about what they have been involved in, we present them from for one card and then another card and then another card. And we use the card for them to come up with all so sorts of associations about what they just have been involved in. And in the end of the conversation, we, um, we ask them to choose cards that, uh, or qualities that they haven't explored, but they wish they could explore uh, for the future. And what we learned is that, um, again, I, I ran a bit fast over this, but it seems that there are type of types of play qualities that are not invited in into education and it's it's often uh, qualities coming from the fourth house like smashing yelling destroying and mocking I could imagine that uh, you probably haven't experienced that in your education and but often we uh, see in order for events to really have the power of play often these types of qualities they um, they are fuel uh, when it comes to creating situations if you look at children, for example, you, if you look at their practices and you experience that uh, or you have a sense of they are about to get bored, you can be sure for sure that they can and will probably use some of these practices in order to get, yeah, get the situation into some sort of uh, fire. So these, these uh, type of um, uh, these type of actions, these type of qualities, they are often used when people are about to get bored. And of course, if we are only using these, or maybe maybe only these and these, then yeah, uh, we are about to make our education uh, yeah more bored than it could be. So of course, uh, when we talk about when we talk to the students and we also talk to the teachers uh, in pedagogy and teacher education, they are very interested in how it's actually possible to create situations with those qualities. But they are also a bit scared. They are scared of losing control. They are scared of yeah how the students uh, meet uh, these type of um, uh, yeah these type of uh, of qualities. And I remember one, uh, one teacher that I interviewed um, uh, in September, she, uh, she really, uh, yeah, she fall in, felt in love with, uh, with the smashing and was really thinking about how she, she could introduce smashing as a part of uh, her educational um, uh, practices. And she uh, came out with this idea, well, there is a, a story that I need to tell before. She, um, she always created these uh, activities where the students had to be creative. And often it ended up with the students having like a, yeah, a small house with, uh, um, yeah, they, and they have, um, uh, they have spent hours in, in creating this uh, together with the group. But then when they went out of the classroom, they throw it out, but they didn't, wanna, they didn't want to throw it out in a way where the, where the teachers saw it. So they often, they went uh, uh, by the bin right and then they uh, throw it out like that and then they went out of the classroom. So she came out with this idea of instead of them hiding, throwing something out that they didn't really want, she uh, came up with the idea of simply smashing it. So, um, so all the students, they met um, in the end of the class and then the task was simply to smash what they just built so I instead of yeah instead of creating creating a situation where they throw it out anyway she used the quality you could say uh, to make the whole situation even more meaningful uh, to the students but you could of course imagine that uh, if you did that in in a kindergarten with children i could imagine that some children would be very very sad 
because they they want to, they probably want uh, to to take their the, the things that they created home and show their parents. But in this case, she had a sensitivity towards the situation, and she understood her students uh, observing what they did, and then she, she she simply used the smashing quality as a part of her her teaching. So that's basically the idea with the tarot is to make the students and the teacher reflect upon what they do and make them think about what uh, they could do in the future based on their knowledge about their students and their practices and their insights about the importance of, yeah, of those qualities uh, relating to the fourth house. <laughs>